Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Great. Well, thank you so much for inviting me. It's really exciting to be here. There's such a great energy in the room. Um, and like people were saying earlier, I feel like I've, I'm here with my tribe. Um, like many of you, I started out in ocean research. I was actually a student of Boris Worms. I took one of his classes at Dow. It was a highlight for me, so it's really exciting to be back here. Um, but besides ocean research, I discovered a love for experiential learning when I worked at a marine science camp on Grand Manan, uh, a seemingly innocuous summer job that totally took me off that path um, because I fell in love with it, um, really saw its transformative power, and have followed experiential learning ever since and ended up uh, in Newfoundland uh, working with the Oceans Learning Partnership. So I'd like to share some of my experiences uh, with you today so that uh, uh, we can perhaps learn from each other and, and, and share our stories of successes and challenges. Uh, so just to start out with, I've come from St. John's today. And just to set the context, um, this was a place first mapped in the 1760s by none other than Captain James Cook. This is where he learned to be a great navigator. And look at that amazing map, it's so accurate. Um, people settled this area for the cod, for the abundant fisheries. Um, and then since then, it, it's, it's become this, this uh, hub for ocean research, ocean tech, and offshore energy as well as transportation. We really are a, a coastal province really dependent on ocean sectors. And yet, just like the inland provinces, we learn so little about the ocean in our, in our education system. So K-12 uh, K school system, even in uh, a coastal province, has very little examples of the ocean within their curriculum. So here in this comic, I, I love this, um, here's this guy stranded and he's saying, you know, day 44, stranded with nothing as flat but flat, empty water as far as the eye can see. And below, of course, all of this uh, activity is happening. So that's sort of um, my perspective on how we look at the ocean, uh, particularly in Newfoundland. Whenever I tell people what I do, they say, oh, really? You work out on the gray ocean? Like, ooh, how dismal. Um, and, and, and they have really no perspective of, of we're this island. We're fully dependent on the ocean for, for our groceries, even. And we think so little about it. So really, to me, it's, it's so essential to um, instill that appreciation for the ocean and, and perhaps spark an interest even in, a, in an ocean-related career. So when I was thinking about this conference today, I was kind of reflecting on, on our organization and, um, and, and what Canoe is doing as well. And, and, and I kind of came up with these three guiding questions that have shaped what we've been doing in Newfoundland, but I think which also probably apply to, to everyone in this room uh, in some way or another. Um, so first, it's all about engaging K to 12 students to increase uh, ocean literacy. And I think the key word there is engage. Because if you engage them and you excite them, then the ocean literacy will just follow from there. It really is hooking them. Uh, secondly, I don't know how we got to 111, but uh, secondly, um, it's really about motivating and supporting the teachers to be able to integrate ocean examples into their teaching. Um, because we're dealing with a jam-packed curriculum no matter where you are in the country. Um, so how do you empower them and, and excite them about bringing these ocean examples into their teaching? And third, how can we help connect the ocean research, um, for example, happening in Newfoundland, there's so much exciting <coughs> research happening there, uh, but here in BC, in Nova Scotia, in the Arctic, there's so much fascinating stuff happening. There's this development of incredible ocean technology, sensors, the video conferencing, uh, the video uh, from underwater that you're hearing about today, these exciting things happening. So how do we connect those researchers and industry with our youth? So these are kind of some guiding questions that maybe we can keep in the back of our mind as we're going throughout the day um, and this evening, and, and, and maybe, maybe we'll come up with some answers together. Uh, so I work with a small, a very small nonprofit called the Oceans Learning Partnership, uh, which we like to call OLP, which was launched in November 2011. And it was supported by industry from the very beginning. So it was supported with funding uh, from the Hebron Project, who are really interested in the idea of, um, of hands-on experiences for youth related to the ocean. But it's also been supported by the provincial government through the Department of Ed, um, the Department of Fisheries and Aquaculture, and Department of Rural Development uh, since 2011. 
and really it was formed to address this gap in ocean education. Um, so we sort of were bringing together key players and saying, uh, hello, we're this coastal province with all these ocean sectors crying out for skilled laborers, and yet our youth think they have to leave the province to find work. So how can we let them know there's all these opportunities and that there's this fascinating, important uh, ocean environment at our doorstep, literally a stone's throw from most Newfoundland schools. Uh, so we really were, were coming together to address this gap and, and try and tackle it in, in, in specific ways through experiential learning. So the hands-on uh, component is the cornerstone of what we do. We have a flagship program that we call the Coastal Explorers Field School, and it's really about exposing the youth through these outdoor education programs to the ocean. Uh, something that makes us a little bit unique um, is our partnership-based operating model. Um, so our success has really been based on collaborating with other institutions and using their facilities. Um, it's been essential to what we do and who we are. So I'd just like to start by acknowledging the partnership, which is the P in Ocean Learning Partnership. Um, so our initial major partners were Parks Canada and Memorial University, and since then we've brought on um, the Marine Institute and Fisheries and Oceans Canada as well. So when I say program partners, I mean they're really involved. So we're sharing um, facilities and infrastructure, but they're also involved from the beginning in design of programming and delivery of programming in the case of Parks Canada. We do training together, so we train interpreters together to, to kind of come up with a common high standard um, for delivering experiential education through storytelling and a lot of the things that people have been talking about today. Then we brought together the key education partners in, in Newfoundland Labrador. So we brought them around the table as part of our um, board of directors and they sit on steering committees. So the Provincial Department of Education, we have one school district, we're quite lucky in Newfoundland Labrador, they've just amalgamated so we only have one point of contact. Uh, the Teachers Association and then the Mun Faculty of Education who are training all the new teachers. It's a great opportunity for exciting them about ocean education. So we formed a, an advisory group of practicing teachers, of curriculum specialists to really advise us on what's the best way to plug into this really busy school system and how do you feel about outdoor education and how can the informal learning complement the formal learning. So it's been really um, essential to building it and, and, and making sure it works in the real world. Uh, so as I said, the Hebron project's been a major funder um, from the beginning, but they've also been interested in actually exposing what they do to youth, so inviting uh, field trips, for example, to facilities to learn about um, what they do and the many different job, uh, job roles within that industry. And working with industry associations like the aquaculture industry to ask them, you know, what would you like to reach out and tell uh, students about potential careers in, in that industry. We work with community partners, specifically the town of Holyrood, which is a small community uh, about 40 minutes from St. John's, who is really interested in making themselves a hub for ocean technology, but also ocean education. So they've really embraced what we're doing and invited us to uh, be in their, in their town. But we're also in discussion with six other communities around the province to look at, is this something that would benefit your community and bring um, something, something to your area? So as I said, uh, our flagship program, we, we do a lot of different things, but I want to focus on what, one thing uh, here today. Our flagship program is the Coast Explorers Field School, and this is a boat-based program for K-12 uh, students and their teachers, and it's complemented by activities on the shoreline, in labs, at aquarium, and touch tanks, and things like that. So we currently operate at four field sites, Terranova National Park on the east coast of Newfoundland, the Ocean Science Center in Logie Bay uh, in, in St. John's. This is a Memorial University uh, ocean facility. For, for those invertebrate lovers, it's actually shaped and inspired by a nautilus. It's amazing. <laughs> the Bombay Marine Station, if you get the chance, go to Gross Morn. It's absolutely fantastic. This is in Norris Point, nestled right beneath Gross Morn uh, National Park. Uh, this is a residential marine research facility for undergrads and researchers. Um, where you could actually come and live and study the ocean environment, but they weren't doing anything with, with K-12, they just had limited resources. Um, well, they were running a grade eight program. And so they said, why don't you come out here and, and work with us and we'll try and maximize resources so we can start doing high school programs with kids out in the Gross Morn region. And then our key area is uh, in Holyrood, which is uh, just outside St. John's, and we have a, 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 another vessel operating in this area. So our whole, um, our whole operating uh, 
how we do things is based around this idea of a floating classroom. So getting the kids out of the classroom, out of the classroom and onto a, a floating classroom. So a research lab and using the ocean as your learning environment. It keeps advancing on me. <laughs> uh, so it's really set up to have that flying bridge up top where you can do lots of 360 views. You can observe wildlife, you can take weather measurements. You can go on the back deck and deploy uh, equipment like the students are doing here with the CTD. And then we have the inside uh, interior cabin part of the vessel, uh, which here on the Explorer has a, uh, a monitor so that all the students uh, can see, which is really helpful when you're looking at a microscope or the ROV. We've got uh, a table space for dissections and a library, and then all the navigation equipment, um, which really excites uh, some of those more um, engineer type kids or the ones that see themselves as, as going to sea. Uh, the program, the Genesis, was with this man, Captain Ian Negrin. I don't know if any of you know him. I've had the pleasure of meeting him, but he's a real inspiration. Um, he uh, started a hands-on program back in the 90s, actually, looking at navigation and integrated physics and taking students out to learn about uh, navigation equipment on vessels. And so it kind of evolved from that, where he started this nonprofit called Ocean Learning Partnership um, to take kids out. Uh, so we do a lot of activities on the vessel and on the shoreline uh, from plankton sampling where the kids are involved in actually using the net and deploying it and learning you know, why it's important to time how long you've collected it, to estimate the volume of water you've collected, and then they get to use the microscope to see this life up close and it's mind-blowing. It really is mind-blowing to watch these kids see plankton for the first time and ask them, what do you see in the water? Look over the, what, look over the side of the boat, what do you see? Oh, there's nothing there, there's nothing there. And then to see this up close and then we put it under the microscope and they can see individual species and cod eggs and the diatoms. It's just a real, um, it's a paradigm change for them and it's powerful stuff. Uh, and I'm personally very passionate about plankton, so I go on and on about that. Um, but we're really lucky that um, our funders invested in some really great, sophisticated ocean tech as well. So we have ROVs, remotely operated vehicles. We have multi beam sonar, so the kids can see the bottom. We can actually map shipwrecks with it. Uh, we have uh, a CTD, so we can measure temperature and salinity every second at every depth. Uh, and then we can send that to teachers and they can graph the temperature over seasons. So we're really lucky to have that investment uh, in our floating classroom. And then we, just, we do some simpler low-tech activities like observing, exer observing the, the cormorants on that, on that rock or taking them to the shoreline and using these basic PVC pipes lined with some uh, 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 plastic to look through the water and learn about the, uh, the coastal area as a nursery environment for, for coastal fishes like juvenile cod, for example. Uh, we involve researchers. So here's an example of uh, Dr. Bob Gregory from DFO coming out and demonstrating how he uses beach stains to learn about young fish in Terranova National Park. And the students are working side by side with him and learning how you collect data. Um, and, and why it's important, why he uses that, why he comes back every month and, and, and they learn like, that this is the best, this is the most well-studied area for juvenile cod in the world simply because Dr. Bob Gregory has taken the effort to go back every year, every year and every year he, he inspires local students to realize this is in their own backyard, this amazing habitat for cod. Um, so it really, it really is exciting to see them connect with researchers and it's not just, uh, it's not just um, experienced researchers like Dr. Gregory. We really try and connect um, graduate students. So here we have a, a graduate student, Emmy from the Ocean Science Center. Um, and here's David in the blue shirt. And uh, they're involving high school students in a lab-based program. So they're doing dissections. Um, they're learning about um, uh, the work that goes on here. They're identifying uh, local crab species uh, using a dichotomous key. But the grad students are mentoring them through the whole process. We're really connecting um, to different, uh, different age groups um, to this love of science and why a grad student might have chosen that career path. And then finally, uh, we try and excite the teachers. So this was taken a couple weeks ago when uh, we took a group of 12 teachers and principals out on uh, our vessel for a day to really learn about water quality and how you can use that, uh, that as a lab to cover a lot of different principles about science. 
um, and we had this wonderful day on the water where they got really jazzed up about um, go, taking their kids outside and realizing they could do this at a local pond or they could come out on the boat with us. There's lots of different ways to take students outside and give them this really exciting experience. Um, because they kind of came in the morning like, oh, you know, it's 9 a.m., I need my coffee, this is going to be okay, I guess. And by the end of the day, they were just like, well, I talked to them about plankton, and now they're hooked on plankton. <laughs> so they just got really, really excited about it. And, and that's the power of being out in the field and really seeing it. Um, so our goal now, we've, we've really worked the last three years on education programs for kids. And our next goal is really going a step further with teachers. Um, because if we can equip them with the confidence and the tools to bring this into the classroom and take their students to the ocean, then we'll begin to see the difference. Because we really need to uh, get the teachers interested. Experiential education is highly valued. We've heard many people say that. There's lots of evidence to support it. But it's a super busy school year. So we really need to um, get everyone on board around the education institutes to invest in this and to give the time and energy it takes to do outdoor programming. So long-term goal, big picture, is the integration of experiential learning programs about the ocean, including ocean literacy, of course, into our K-12 curriculum in Newfoundland and into teacher training at the Faculty of Ed. So cross your fingers, we'll hope for the best. And if you're interested in following us and finding out more, we're very active on social media, so I invite you to uh, follow us and uh, come talk to me if you have any questions. We'd be happy to talk to you. Thank you so much.